race fans, Alex Weaver here. We just visited Texas Motor Speedway where we saw a new winner with the three of Austin Dillon in victory lane. I'm gonna welcome in our championship winning crew chief, Cole Pern. Cole, uh, there's a surface of the sun and then there's Texas Motor Speedway inside of a race car. Uh, we have to imagine that the heat played a factor in the win, but Austin Dillon, a new winner in victory lane for 2020. Yeah, wild day for sure. Wild finish. Definitely uh, cars coming and going all day, but you mentioned the heat. Definitely a, a hot one. You can see why uh, that race is normally scheduled in the spring and the fall and not in the middle of summer. So those, uh, those guys definitely uh, earned their money yesterday. Well, Cole, I want you to break down restarts for me because we saw the restart of the final stage with the Penske cars getting that whole pile up and causing chaos in the whole entire field. But we also saw some lane variations with drivers taking different lanes on those restarts. Yeah, I like that it wasn't a clear top or bottom lane being better. I think uh, the PJ1 offered uh, an option for the outside lane, but then, you know, it's such a shorter distance with that one and two the way it is now with uh, since it was reconfigured. So. There was a lot of gamemanship as far as who was behind you. I think that was a huge part, um, you know, and, and just the timing of it all. Like you could get a jump out, but then you're subjected to getting side drafted in the wrong spot and then not maybe cycle back. So there was really no clear cut way to know which way was the, the dominant lane, which I thought was great. I think that made it really interesting to watch as it, as it went. And, you know, everyone was a little bit afraid of that outside lane getting up in those marbles uh, out of the main groove. And I, that's what happened with the, with that Penske shuffle there. And then obviously chaos ensued there, took out a lot of really good cars. So I think everyone was kind of holding their breath uh, when they were in that outside lane. You're, you're trying to get it all, but you, you know, you jump that cushion the least little bit and you're in trouble. Well, speaking of Penske, the 12 car was strong all day long and really looked like they had that strategy played out, but there are some things on the racetrack that you can't control. Yeah, it's always the the rub, right? You can you're racing your competitors. You you think you've got them, you know, outsmarted, but you don't know when a caution's going to fall. And obviously, that meteor meteor falls out of the sky, and a guy you don't even pay any attention to does something uh, crazy and causes a big rack and ruins your day. So it's uh, you know, that double zero deal that was tough tough to watch. You know, those guys uh, have been in those the twelve shoes, the eleven shoes uh, in those days when you're having a great day, and then something completely out of your control. Uh, you know, sends it awry. So it's just, it's, it's always the, you know, the, the risk management side of things. Like, you know, if the worst thing happens, how are we going to get burned here? And, and, and there is no perfect plan. At some point you're going to be exposed. And, and those are the, when you see uh, the crew chiefs uh, biting their nails or, or acting nervous, it's when you're sitting there exposed and, and being open to, to get screwed. Those are the, the nerve wracking moments. Another factor was pit stop strategy. So I want to talk to you about pits uh, and what different uh, teams were variating on pit roads. So break down, especially the winner, the three, and even the eight of Tyler Reddick, break down some pit strategies for me. Yeah, there was a huge amount going on all day. Obviously, everyone was trying to manage track position. And if you can't get track position, then you need to do the opposite to, to get it somehow later on in the race. So, you know, I think uh, the key caution there was when the you know, the 12 and the 11 and some of those other guys stayed out, you know, the other back half came, came and pitted and that gave them the option to run longer. Um, then obviously the 12 and 11 are on pit road. They have this, the incident with double zero, uh, chaos ensues, you know, you got top cars now back, uh, back in the pack. So, and then really when it came down to the last caution, I'm still amazed that more, more people didn't take two or take, take fuel only because it left the door open for RCR to, to make that strategy call and get the track position. They had control of the front row at that point and, and they never let go. I, I know all the cautions made it more interesting towards the end, but I really think it out in clean air that that three car, once he got the lead was, uh, was set, was going to set sail. saw Cole Custer win at Kentucky. Tyler Reddick showed out all day long at Texas and then finishes with a second place finish. So how impressed are you with this rookie class of 2020? Yeah, definitely the best we've seen in a while for sure. And I think, uh, you know, these racetracks have really allowed them to, to kind of get, get into a better spot and get some better results. It's just so hard, uh, you know, with the schedule, what we've had this year for these guys to get any type of rhythm and the fact that they're getting these results with no practice and, and going to these tracks for the first time with a totally different rules package than what they raced 
uh, in Xfinity. I think it just shows the credit, the work ethic that they're that they're putting in, and and their teams are doing a good job getting getting them what they need. So maybe it's just they don't know any different. I don't know. It might be because uh, you know normally don't run Texas in the summer, so maybe it's not as much an advantage. Uh, we don't have Kentucky Day races, so who's maybe uh, the randomness could be playing into their hands a little bit. Well, the drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series are in the middle of a four race and 12 day span period right now. So we have to imagine that the pressure is building, but also this grueling schedule. But oh, yeah, playoffs are looming. Uh, we're only eight races to the playoffs. So what are you keeping your eyes on for this playoff picture? Because now with Custer and now with Austin Dillon, it's completely shaken up. Oh, you just said it. I think the fact that those guys get wins, that just changes it massively. I think when guys that are outside the bubble can win and and put themselves in it just makes everybody cringe now you look at that cut line you got a lot of good teams that are sitting there being like oh man if we don't win we could be in trouble we have a couple bad races here and uh you know we could be out of it so it's definitely going to be difficult you know i think a, a lot of those guys that are on that bubble i think the biggest thing they can do is just have clean races they can't have mistakes they can't get caught in wrecks because that's what's going to kill you and we still have some huge wild cards um two of them in the state of florida coming up so i think uh you know obviously everybody's cringing a little bit and and those guys winning just changes the the whole outlook we're continuing the busy schedule cole thank you for breaking down texas for me let's let's do it again after kansas what do you say yeah we got uh these midweek races there's lots to talk about